Okay, so um, this is the Reaper Slipid in tutorial that I said I was going to make. Um, this is the same track I was talking about before, 240 beat per minute, death metal, insane nonsense. Uh, the song's at 240, like I said, down here. My greatest by default set to 16th notes. Actually, no, it's not, but it will be now. Um, to do this, I created a little macro. If you look in the action list, I call the drum split. So if you look at that, um, all it does, it moves the edit cursor to the mouse cursor, selects the item under the mouse cursor, and then splits the item at the edit cursor, which all it really does is when you hit this key command, it creates a split on your drum tracks wherever your mouse cursor is. Um, I also edited a couple of other the default commands like scroll. If you look, scroll horizontally is uh, normally shift in the mouse wheel, but because to slip audio in Reaper you have to hold option and click and drag, I set um, scroll horizontally to option and the mouse wheel as well. And that um, drum split macro I created, I set to Alt S, which is Option S. I don't I don't know why it's showing Alt and Option on other ones. They're the exact same thing on a Mac, anyways. On PC, all these commands will be done with Alt. So you want to switch your horizontal scroll to be done with Alt mouse wheel. Alt S should be your hover split command that I just showed you guys. And uh, to slip stuff around, it's Alt, click and drag. So for anyone who isn't really familiar with slip editing, um, if you look here, say like I, I split my kick track. Okay, so uh, if I hold Alt or Option and click and drag, it'll move the audio inside the region, but without actually moving the region. So if you look, it's pulling stuff from outside of the region because the region is just a smaller version of the entire audio file that the region's created from. So it's pulling that kick and bringing in a copy and that kick and bringing in a copy. And I have my preferences set. Uh, if you look here, to crossfade automatically every time you split with a five millisecond crossfade. So if you notice when I split my audio right here, it created a five millisecond crossfade. So just like in Beat Detective, how anytime you have two pieces of audio next to each other after you chop something up, you need a, a crossfade. This will have a crossfade for me automatically. And because the actual region boundaries are never moving, as long as you create the crossfade in the right place to begin with, you'll never have to touch it again. You just have to move your audio to where you want it and then you're done. I have set up pretty much all my key commands in here to mimic Pro Tools since that's what I've been using for the past couple of months. Um, I don't know, I find it very logical, to be honest with you. So anyways, first things first, you need to group all your drum tracks. So just right click and highlight with your marquee and hit G to group. And I'll just scroll back to the beginning of the song. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, select all just because for some reason it's way easier to see the grid. So these are all my drum tracks, obviously, my left and right kick drums, a snare trigger track, a snare top mic, snare bottom mic, these are labeled backwards so well. Um, toms, one through three, and hi-hat left and right spot mics, overheads left and right, and a ride. So the first thing we want to do is this first hit in this fill, it obviously is supposed to go on this beat. I don't think this will record the actual audio from Reaper, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But um, the crates crossfades starting at the mouse cursor and going five milliseconds to the right. So if you watch, I have my mouse cursor sitting there, I'll hit option S. Oh. Well, you know what? It's because I have stupid snapping on. Let's turn that off because you want to do everything by eye. You don't want everything snapping to the grid. So 
in Pro Tools, there's a trigger pad setting that I usually have at about five milliseconds, which means when I snap this transient to the grid right there, I want a five millisecond gap here and then a five millisecond crossfade there. So that preserves any transients just in case for some reason it doesn't chop it in exactly the right place. And a lot of times too, like if the drummer's playing the ride and the snare at the same time, the snare is the more prominent transient and it's the one that you want to snap to the grid. But a lot of the times they'll sort of flam the ride and the snare so that the ride transient will be a tiny bit early compared to the snare transient. So by leaving a little bit of a pad, you can ensure that you're not chopping off the beating of the transient or we're just doing something that results in like a duplication of the very start of the transient, which is something that you come across a lot. So anyways, like I was saying before, I want to put the fade about here. So that leaves me a five millisecond crossfade and a little bit of a gap. The other thing, if you put it in the wrong place, if you hold shift and grab the crossfade, you can move it wherever you want. So we'll move that to like there. Then we'll option click the audio, slide that snare head to where you want. Notice it's moving everything after here because I haven't created any other like fades. That's fine. That's what you want anyways. So this next hit, this one's early. So we can't put the crossfade right before the bar line. We have to put the crossfade right before the hit. So we'll put the crossfade like there, drag the head over. Now this one's late. Crossfade right before the grid. There, this one's early, crossfade right before the hit, move it over. This kick hit, it's early, crossfade right before the kick, move it over. This kick hit is almost on time, but a little early, crossfade, move it over. Still holding option, I just move my mouse wheel to scroll. Like I'm not letting go of option at all this entire time. It's option S to click, option click and, or option S to split, option click and drag to slip, then option mouse wheel to scroll. So I'm just holding option and going S click scroll, S click scroll, S click scroll. Next tom hit is late. Move that early. This one's early now. Move it late. This one you can barely see, but it's right there. There's one right here. Move that over. Kick drum needs to be moved. This kick drum's late. This tom hit's early. This it's kind of hard to tell. That tremor hit kind of lightly, but this one looks like it's on time, and I can't tell where that one is, so we'll just leave it. Um, another kick hit that's early so move that on time now this kick hits late move it back snare so this is a massive snare roll so we'll move all those like hopefully i'm explaining this clearly enough i feel like i'm kind of just jumping into it but like it's pretty brain dead simple it's one key command and then just clicking and moving the audio to where you want it to be But yeah, as you can see, like I'm getting through this whole fill really fast, even while I'm doing this tutorial and explaining it to you guys. Like it takes like literally like three quarters of a second to move each hit. So like I would much rather do this than ever edit drums in Beat Detective ever again. Just because the amount of time it takes to edit something in Beat Detective is absolutely brutal for something that's complicated where it could, it's going to put all the hits in the wrong place half the time, anyways. Um, doesn't really look like I've gotten that far. Like if you look, I'm only four seconds into the song, but like it took me almost nine hours to edit this whole song in Beat Detective, whereas it took me two hours to do this 